As you can see, I have the Superstar. If you're going to use it, use it now. <clears throat> no, Princess. I stole this star for us. I, I... I guess love really makes a guy come out of his shell. <laughs> I'm late. When this movie came out, this was the talk of the town. Everyone was talking about it in class, and since no one knew who I was, I was just in the back writing ideas that they were blurring out loud to incorporate into this video. So, thanks guys. <laughs> the amount of times I had to just walk around doing my normal business and one of my friends just comes in and- Hey bro, have you seen the Super Mario movie? Dude, at my house too? Yes, I'm making the video. Oh, okay. And ask me if I've seen the movie would be more times than I've actually touched grass. Uh, which wouldn't be much of a competition, but anyway. It was probably really obvious throughout the polls I posted leading up to this video that Detective Pikachu was outshining the others. This was on purpose. And this was for the final poll. Detective Pikachu was undoubtedly better than a lot of the others listed. But I wanted to see how you all thought it stacked up against the recently released Super Mario movie. And it outperformed it but just barely. Let's get into this. The Super Mario movie was released April 5th, 2023, and was created by Illumination Animation in collaboration with Nintendo and released by Universal Pictures. It had a budget of 100 million US dollars, and as of recording, was able to make in the box office, are you ready, a whopping 1.239 billion. It's probably because it's the most well-known video game franchise on the planet, but we'll just say Disney, take some notes. You'd think with such a booming box office success that the movie would be a runaway hit, right? Wrong. The movie didn't sit well with official critics, only obtaining a 59% Rotten Tomatoes score. And I was originally thinking that this was another repeat of the Angry Birds movie, but then I saw the audience score. 96%?! Something rotten is definitely going on here. Which is why this time, instead of looking at the thousands and thousands of user reviews we usually look at, we're gonna look at some of the verified critic reviews and see what the intellectuals think about it. It is the laziest possible version of a Mario movie. And for most viewers, young and old, that'll be totally acceptable. Well, if you're a critic and you're saying for most people it's fine, why would you give it a 2 out of 4, Dylan Roth? Wendy Eid says, A frantic easter egg hunt of a film that does the bare minimum to please its loyal existing fanbase. I think the entire existence of this is to please the fanbase, so... I'm pretty sure they wouldn't spend $100 million to do the bare minimum. And also if Nintendo's backing it, Kevin Maher of the UK Times says, It's emotionally bland and yet garish enough to psychologically sedate the preteen Easter audience. Never heard of the preteen Easter audience. I, I don't think there's any religious connotations to this movie. And I like how he just uses like big words to differentiate himself from the uh, so quote unquote preteen audience. Kids may have the time of their lives watching this movie, Mario Bros movie, but for most adults, this is Game over. Boulder Dash. Are you telling me that the high audience score is attributed to kids? I refuse to believe it with how long this franchise has been around. This isn't the Angry Birds movie, so I think it's finally time to do some investigating for ourselves and find out the truth. We begin the tale with Bowser dropping his hot all over this snowy kingdom. And their inhabitants, the blue penguins of Madagascar, including the one with the questionably deep voice, try to valiantly defend their home. To be fair, I don't think ice wins against fire. And by that, I mean Jack Black playing Bowser is literally fire. With relative ease, Bowser is able to obtain the coveted superstar, and claims he's finally unstoppable. Yes, because being able to breed fire and having someone who can literally use magic isn't enough, apparently. Someone's overcompensating. We then transition to 
an awkwardly done plumbing commercial featuring our favorite Mario and Luigi. I almost forgot these two were actually New York plumbers. And we get a bit of fan service as they're seen talking in their recognizable Italian accents. But this act is swiftly dropped as we see the real talent behind the characters for this movie. Star-Lord is Mario, and whatever this thing is, is Luigi. Honestly, they don't sound as bad as the internet speculated, particularly with Chris Pratt. I'll say more in the final review at the end. Stick around. In this universe, Mario and Luigi know nothing about the Mushroom Kingdom or its existence, and instead are just two brothers who are just trying to start their own plumbing startup. Astonishingly, someone looked at this commercial and went, I want a piece of that Italian ass, and they were able to get their first client, but were thwarted by Doug and sent back to square one to a very supportive family. All hope for that successful plumbing business seems to be lost for Mario here. That is, until he gets word of a major pipeline failure down in Brooklyn spewing water comically everywhere and hatches the brilliant idea that he and Luigi should try to show everyone that they could do what hundreds of city workers cannot. Quite the ambitious task, considering their last job was just tightening one screw and becoming dog food. After illegally entering the underground sewers and finding the cause of the problem, with the solution to seemingly only turn a wheel of course, they somehow find a way to screw that up. The real question is, why the hell is there zero city officials down there? Are they the fucking wicked witch of the west? This predicament leads the pair towards a strange unknown area full of random pipes, and everyone knows where this bit is going. After a bit of LSD, Mario and Luigi are inadvertently separated from each other, with Mario landing himself in the Mushroom Kingdom with this spawn of Satan, and Luigi landing in the Darklands. Probably so they can cram some Luigi's Mansion references in here. Oh hey look! It's me! Mario, on the other hand, isn't exactly doing much better. After being led to Princess Peach, thanks to Toad of course, and getting his ass handed to him, Mario tries to tell Peach about his brother being trapped in the Darklands, to which he finally learns about Bowser, who has plans to destroy this realm that he finds himself trapped in. This guy's a lunatic. A psycho. He will eat you for breakfast. Hey, that doesn't sound so bad. In response, he demands Peach to help him save his brother, which she agrees as long as he is able to pass an obstacle course reminiscent of the Mario games, complete with having to force feed mushrooms, which ironically is Mario's least favorite food to gain unique powers. Although he isn't able to make it to the end even with an extensive montage, Peach basically half-asses his training and says f*** it. We then cut to Bowser continuing to celebrate his capture of the superstar with his disciples in an all-out party. All is going smoothly until until he blurts out in his excitement, he plans to use the star to marry Princess Peach. And yes, while technically this is canon, when I was first watching this and didn't know that, I was thinking, what in the furry p is this? And then I was thinking, oh shit, he's not actually gay? The rest of the Koopas are obviously in shock at the news, stating the obvious that the princess hates his guts. But in his defense, he says that when she sees he has possession of the superstar, she will instantly fall in love for him. Yes, because from what we've seen so far, she's clearly that shallow. And if not, then he'll basically commit war crimes on the b because he clearly knows how to handle rejection. Mario and Peach embark on their journey to stop Bowser, with the first step being to enlist the help of the Kong army. And this simp insists he join the fellowship. Impressed by this specific Toad's willingness to protect, she agrees. And then we get our one scene of arguably the most iconic character from the Mario franchise other than Mario himself, before we cut to yet another simp in the already famous cutscene that has been re-uploaded and seen about 58 million times. All I'm gonna say is Jack Black can sing me to sleep with those vocals and low key the song actually slapped, like Bowser slapping my ass, but he ends up getting blue ball by this thing. I really don't feel like misgendering today. I can't really blame Bowser for getting as ticked off as he did for being interrupted during his record label hit. I mean, I'd honestly be the same way if I were doing some sus shit when some urchin walks in. Oh yeah, oh, this is dynamite. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And then proceeds to pull down. Hey, bro, have you seen the Super Mario? Oh, you better get back in that closet before I beat your ass. Uh, is that supposed to be a threat? Because Bowser's OnlyFans isn't really cutting dude, it anymore. Dude, not this shit again. No. And uh, also, like, I thought you liked Bowser. You mean, I mean, I'm supposed to be a clone of you, so, like, I thought you would. Wait. Wait, what the hell are you writing? No, 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 no nothing. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Yo, nothing. is that a Bowser smut? No, 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 no. Can I read it? Get the fuck out of my room. It is after Bowser gets so rudely interrupted that he finally learns about the existence of Mario and instantly asks if the princess finds Mario attractive. Sire, look in the mirror. You have nothing to worry about. Ugh, why the hell is he licking his lips like that? I have competition. 
not buying his reassurances, an enraged Bowser demands to learn more about the supposed competitor to his one true love and leaves his horny lover with broken hands. Meanwhile, we are returned to Mario, Peach, and the walking vegetables journey to reach the Jungle Kingdom, where they stop for a bit of rest in which the idea is teased that Peach was actually a foreigner to the realm, and this is never expanded on past this point. And then we finally get an update on Luigi's little predicament. After being captured by a bunch of discount shoes, he is brought directly to Bowser, who tries to forcibly torture by mustache to try and get information on his brother. Do princesses find him attractive? Uh, yeah? because he's not a deranged turtle? Oh gosh, the simping is worse than I thought. Luigi is promptly locked up in a pit full of cages with a bunch of other condemned individuals, which pretty much consists of the penguins from earlier in the movie and Illumily who probably needs a great deal of therapy. With Luigi's story pretty much boring at this point for the audience, we return back to the fellowship again as they finally reach the foot of the jungle kingdom, in which with little resistance and a short take on me montage, we finally get to meet the ruler of the jungle kingdom. While initially he laughs at Peach's face for a requesting their help because they couldn't be bothered, Mario is able to strike a deal. The Kong army will assist if he can beat his son in battle. Sounds easy, right? But what he doesn't know is his son is Donkey Kong and he gets his ass handed to him. And the writers wasted no time adding some references here as well. But after becoming a furry, he's able to beat the ever living shit out of this brute and is deemed victorious. Upholding his end of the deal, Donkey Kong Sr. mobilizes the Kong army in an apparent intercept mission before Bowser reaches the Mushroom Kingdom. But to do that, we're gonna need cots. Can't have a Mario movie without its most iconic IP, now can we? And the shortcut he spoke of is my least favorite map in Mario Kart, the Cursed Rainbow Road. But this is an opportunity for a teensy tiny little bit of character development between Mario and Peach. Although abruptly stopped with the weirdest way of forcefully pushing the main conflict of the movie, when it just doesn't make sense. Back on the Brooklyn, I'll buy you a turtle. <laughs> Maybe I will. Dude, is this you flirting? Donkey Kong is definitely a virgin. You are so embarrassing. A princess would never go out with you. He was just offering her to buy her a pet turtle, my dude, not to clean some pipes. This was almost certainly forcibly inserted here, just so the introduction of Bowser's convenient ambush on Mario and the Kong army would actually make sense. An ambush they did, forcing everyone to separate to fend for themselves, ultimately leading to Mario losing his sweet ride and the Kong army being captured. And when it seems like they have made it to the clear, the cursed blue shell manifests. But I don't think blue shells are supposed to target the cart in second place. That seems a bit bullshit to me. And while Mario and Donkey Kong seemingly become dinner, Peach and Toad are able to escape back to the Mushroom Kingdom to warn everyone that their plan had ultimately failed, and that she will have no choice but to face Bowser head on to buy some time. And with Bowser quickly approaching and his shadow looming over the Mushroom Kingdom, Peach makes the final stand with Toad to finally confront the horny turtle. But you see the intro of the video, it doesn't take long for Bowser to reveal his true intentions to Princess Peach and ask her for her hand in marriage, and obviously just laughs in his face. Wrong answer. Using the spawn of Satan as a hostage, he forces Peach to agree to marriage, and she's taken away for preparations to begin. Meanwhile, using spare parts from Donkey Kong's destroyed cart, he and Mario are able to escape the belly of the beast and make their way back to the Mushroom Kingdom. And goddamn, Bowser already has a wedding cake set up and everything already. Rule 34 artists will get a kick out of this. But yes, Finally, we see one of my favorite Nintendo characters. Finally, he's in the background, but I'll take it. As Peach comes down the aisle, Bowser romantically reveals that Luigi and the other prisoners will be sacrificed in her honor during the wedding, because for some reason this twisted f thinks she'd be into that sort of sh**. But Peach has a reveal too. Sneaking the ice flower into her bouquet, she turns into Elsa and starts to Let it go. all over the ceremony, but instead of turning her sister to ice, she turns Bowser into a popsicle. After cramming every bit of Super Mario you could possibly imagine in 30 seconds, Donkey Kong and Mario are able to reach Peach's aid, and Mario is able to save Luigi from a fiery death. Guess being a furry really is the solution, but as things seem to be ending for Bowser's reign of terror, he has one more ace up his sleeve, the gargantuan Bullet Bill on a route to destroy the Mushroom Kingdom. And now, being the only one that could possibly fly at the moment, Mario races to try and stop the nuclear bomb by giving it dry eyes. It's probably safe to say he didn't appreciate the gesture. Now hot on his tail, ha. Mario ends up leading Bullet Bill into the original pipe that led Mario to this realm in the first place, which, in its detonation, set off a chain reaction that sucked the entirety of the Mushroom Kingdom into a pipe and spinning it back into Brooklyn, Bowser and all. Speaking of which, he is now infuriated as ever that Mario has ruined his fairy tale wedding, even though I thought Peach was the one who ruined the wedding, but we'll overlook that for now. now you will suffer. Uh, 
like me! Huh, that reminds me of a specific someone. While Mario sustains quite the beating and looks as though he's about to accept defeat, the commercial that was shown at the beginning of the movie is played on the screen in front of him with the phrase, Save Brooklyn, on repeat, giving him the inspiration he needs to emerge from the rubble and take Bowser in one last dance. But why the f*** is everyone just standing in the background there, acting like this is some sort of high school fight? And why is Peach smiling at this? With the help of Peach and Luigi, Mario and his brother are able to power up with the Superstar and become temporarily invincible, swiftly bringing an end to Bowser's reign of terror and millions of dollars in property damage. After promptly turning Bowser into the pet turtle Mario was talking about earlier, the rest of Brooklyn completely ignore all of the alien beings who just arrived out of thin air and commended Mario and Luigi as heroes, even gaining the approval of the doggo from earlier in the movie. Now we fast forward to the final scene. Mario and Luigi have a permanent home in the Mushroom Kingdom and continue to live their dream as plumbers back in Brooklyn. And in the end credit scene, Bowser gets one last solo that is slightly longer than the infamous scene, but with arguably better lighting. Hey, but at least he isn't interrupted by the horny wizard this time. Oh, oh shit. Sorry, Yoshi. And that's the Mario movie. Now to give my thoughts. One issue I had with this film was their effort to try and cram every single Mario franchise reference as they could to try and appease as big of an audience as they possibly could and try to get as many people to recognize as many characters as they could. To the point where even notable characters get only one scene of screen time. <laughs> given that this had to be crammed in an hour and a half, they pulled it off. Yes, even though I only got my one scene of Yoshi, I feel like storyline wise they did the best they could. And it was well orchestrated enough to not make the audience question or feel out of pace with the story. None of these scenes seemed to drone on for so long that we were reaching for the bottle of bleach, but none of them felt too fast or I would blink and I already missed an important detail. Casting is another strong suit this film had. Jack Black obviously carried this entire movie, in my opinion. This guy is literally such a good actor and very into his role as Bowser, going as far as to completely recreate the Peaches song in real life, which is a treat to watch. I would watch it. And no, Chris Pratt was not a bad casting decision, but I know the internet will probably tell me otherwise. He honestly wasn't that bad. Uh, dare I say he fit the role insanely well. And honestly, I'm gonna throw Charlie Day in there too. He perfectly captured what Luigi was supposed to act like and probably what the audience assumed he would act like. For the best scene of the movie, I'm sure it was a shock to no one, but I had to put down Bowser's Peaches song. It was actually the only musical number in the entire film, and this song actually slap. Not only was Jack Black's performance out of the park for this one, but this scene actually solidified a major plot point of the storyline with Bowser's end goal, which was marrying Peach. But it gave the loyal fans who actually already knew the lore quite a laugh since Bowser's singing about his crush is something quite frankly you would never really expect and definitely made us love Bowser in this film even more. However, not all scenes are created equally. In fact, there were a lot of scenes where I wish I could have gotten Will Smith from Men in Black to wipe my goddamn memory, but I think it's only fair that I give the unfortunate award of worse scene to when Bowser finally gets his slimy hands on Luigi. There was really no purpose behind the scene other than bridging how Mario and Luigi were eventually going to meet later down the road. And as much as I like Bowser's character, this was just another chance for him to do more simping and asking weird questions. Honestly, the scene should have ended way sooner than it did. Overall, the Super Mario movie as a film, intended for all fans of the franchise, as well as serving as a family film. If it filled both audiences, I'd say perfectly, but most importantly, remained faithful to the fan base, and the writers clearly did their research for the most part. The attention to detail was also excellent, like Mario doing his iconic run from the games, even if it was only for a split second. The real gripe I have with this movie is just the storyline seemed a bit cramped in an effort to try and show the audience as much as they could at once, and a bit of a longer runtime, like 10 or 15 minutes, could have done wonders to give more importance to those small pieces of the plot, such as Peach's origins into the Mushroom Kingdom, or Mario and Luigi growing up together in those little flashbacks. I think it's only fair to give the Super Mario movie my final rating score of an 8 out of 10. So you verified critics can suck it! And with that, comment your thoughts, and leave a like, as well as subscribe, or else this gremlin will haunt your dreams when you sleep. I'll see you all later. All right, video done, just ending recording, okay. Shit, what am I gonna do for the next video? I wish I could do something more game related, but there's no other notable game related movies I could think of that came out recently. <coughs> <coughs> oh, gosh, guess I'll never know.